when it comes to a golf ball, consistency is key. Most golfers who are die hard toward a specific brand are concerned about how a different golf ball would affect their game. Will it spin more? How will my clubs affect the compression? Will it cut through the wind? Most of your average golfers couldn't care less. But for the elites, these factors matter. I'm Golf Ball Attic, and this is the Snell Golf Ball Review. At the end of the millennium, Dean Snell would create a golf ball that would completely change how we think about golf balls and how golf balls are designed. When he co-created the Pro V1, it completely changed the course of history of how pros use them and how companies would soon follow suit. But Dean Snell wasn't done there. He then pretty soon went to TaylorMade and revolutionized their golf ball line, creating balls like the Project A, their TP Black, their TP Red, and before long, pros were even starting to use TaylorMade balls on tour which had never been heard of. However, Dean Snell's still not done. Here we are 20 years later, and he's found a new way. For the last few years, he's actually created his own company, Snell Golf, and he makes his own line of golf balls. Now the way he's trying to change is kind of like what a lot of other companies are doing and what I kind of base my whole channel around, selling golf balls directly to consumers at lower prices while still having the same performance. If anyone can do it, it's Dean Snell. He's got the background as an engineer. He's an expert in plastics. He's, heck, he's the one who broadcast uh, urethane into the market at all. So if anyone can come into this direct-to-consumer market and bring a golf ball at a lower price point, but have the same performance, it's this guy. Mainly because he's already done it before. All right, so today I'll be reviewing Snell's two Torline golf balls. Snell actually makes three different golf balls. He does make a beginner two-piece as well, which I'll have a review, or, review for coming soon. Um, but today I'm going to go over the two Tor ones that's meant to go up against the Pro V1 and the Chrome Soft and all the other top Torline balls. There's the MTB Black, which is the softer one of the two, 75 to 80 compression range. And then you have the MTB X, which is your more firmer golf ball in the 85 to 90 compression range. Both are three-piece golf balls, and both are kind of meant to just perform like, honestly, I mean, let's be honest, this is probably a Pro V1 clone. That's what Dean Snell got so successful off making. That's what he designed a lot of his golf balls like. Um, so that's, that's really where he's probably trying to keep it is in that three-piece range, because once you get into four-piece and five-piece, like he did with the TaylorMade, it starts to get a little more expensive. It's hard to keep it in that range. These golf balls retail for $33 a dozen, and that is including shipping. Everything on the Snell website includes free shipping, which is already a bonus. And at $33 a dozen, that's already saving $17 a dozen from the Pro V1. So it already has a leg up in that. The question is, was he able to fit the technology that he used for that into these? We will find out. I'm going to start with around the green, as always, and we'll go from there. All right, so these, uh, these two Snells have been beat up a little bit. These are the ones I've been testing, so you'll notice they do have a little bit of scuffs and, and you know, marks and things like that. Um, on the right here, we have, of course, the MTB Black, and then we have the MTB X here. Uh, the design is very close. Snell actually has a bunch of different number designs. You can get them high, you can get them low. Um, this, of course, right here is a five. Uh, the red number, of course, is apparent on the MTB X. That's the only way you can really tell them apart, other than, of course, the golf dots I put on there, but, and it looks like the golf dots actually stayed through on both of them, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, it's a very basic ball. If you look here at the side, um, that's kind of your alignment tool, which is very basic. Uh, nothing, I, a lot of them are doing on the thicker line, which I really like, but this one's just kind of your basic with text. It's uh, not exactly easy to line up, and um, you know, I, I've definitely seen balls have better there, but maybe that's not what it's going for. Um, but yeah, other than that, not too much in it. Feels nice, has a really nice uh, coating on it that's gonna grab the green. You can feel it really well. This one, not as much, because it's, um, it's been hit a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy with the design. The logo does look nice, though. All right, so that one was the X. So honestly, the X doesn't feel too firm. It's supposed to be the firmer one of the two, but neither of these are a high, high compression above the 100s like you would see on a lot of golf balls um, of that caliber. So honestly, it still feels pretty. It has like a little bit of squish to it, even though it's the harder one. Uh, this next one right here, obviously, is gonna be the black. So this one's gonna be the softer one. And just to kind of get a feel of the comparison, whoop, that one came in hot. 
Um, yeah, honestly, they feel really similar, especially with just little half chips around the green. It's tough to tell. Um, they feel, uh, you know, slight firm press is what I would say. Nothing, you know, crazy. It's not a loud click. Um, there's a loud click coming from the club, but as far as the ball, it feels pretty squishy, actually, especially for one of them even being the firmer model. Uh, but let's see if that continues on full shots. So interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, the black does have more spring to it, which I would expect, but it is louder coming off my putter, which is really weird. Usually the firmer ball is more louder, uh, but this one actually has the most spring and the most sound, which is unique. But um, the other one, the, uh, the Snell MTB X is firmer. So it actually, I think has a little bit more consistent. It doesn't spring off the putter like, you know, a lot of those softer golf balls do. And it actually kind of has a deadening sound. So it really doesn't make a loud click when you putt it. Um, both of them, it's hard to tell. I have such a heavy putter now because I'm using the Wilson that it's hard to tell honestly how it feels as far as feedback coming off. Both do have a firm press, so there is feedback with both, but they're very similar. Um, I would just say it just depends on whether or not you like that extra spring coming off of it. Um, I found that the MTBX, the firmer one of the two, actually had a little bit more consistent of a roll just because it wasn't springing off there. So um, sometimes on shorter putts, I would end up actually going a little too far just because I wasn't used to the springiness, but I'm sure you could get used to it. All right, so coming off of the driver first, um, I do have my paper here for a point of reference just because I'm doing two of them at the same time. Uh, so 230 yards with the X, the firmer one, 228 with the softer one, that's to be expected. Uh, frankly, with it being a little bit firmer and me having about 105 mile an hour swing speed, I expected it to compress a little bit more from the firmer one. Uh, so that makes sense. However, the ball speed was right there neck and neck, 144.8, 144.6. Uh, so pretty much no difference there at all. Both balls perform exactly the same. It might just come down to feel or preference, depending on what you prefer. Uh, and then uh, spin, I, I got 2,934 with the softer one. Uh, that's to be expected. And I got 2,741 with the firmer one. I usually like to see the spin a little lower on the firmer one, but like I said earlier, the firmer one's not really super firm. It's just slightly firmer. So it doesn't surprise me that the number wasn't significant. So uh, both of those are pretty well. That's probably where the difference in uh, distance the two yards came from was that little bit of extra spin, but honestly they perform pretty close. So it's, it's, it's interesting. All right, so seven iron. So uh, 109.3 mile an hour ball speed with the X, the firmer one, and then 113.1 with the softer one. Uh, that's actually a, a, a pretty significant jump there, four mile an hour. Um, as far as the spin goes, uh, the spin was 5,900 and... Uh, 95 RPM with the seven iron. That's just under 6,000. So it's, it's a little out of the range I usually like, but it's pretty darn close. And then the other one was right in, I mean, exactly the perfect range, 5,753. Neither of those options are gonna make a huge difference. You probably won't see them with the naked eye. Um, however, they are very close again. It doesn't surprise me that the little bit softer ones spun a tad bit more, but they're very neck and neck. It could really come down to just preference. This is where the numbers get a little bit interesting. So I only was able to get 7,620 RPM on full pitching wedge shots. Uh, that is actually a pretty close resemblance to the Pro V1, um, which honestly is what this ball feels like it's trying to be. Uh, with, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's the top one in the market, so it makes sense. Uh, a lot of balls are trying to be the Pro V1. Uh, but that spin number is pretty much exact 
to what I get with a Pro V1. Uh, so it's interesting to see that 91.5 mile an hour ball speed. So pretty decent there. That's a, that's about a little tiny bit better than average than what I usually get. And then the other one, I actually, with the softer one, um, the black, I got 93.4 mile an hour ball speed and I averaged just under 9,000 RPMs at 8,977. I have no idea why there was such a significant jump. I mean, I do expect the softer ball to spin a little bit more, uh, but not to that degree. So I don't know if that was just me hitting a little bit cleaner shots with it. Um, I can tell you for sure that the firm one does not spin as much. It doesn't feel like it spins as much, especially on the course. Um, but I, I don't know if that 9,000 RPM is something I would hold it to. Um, it definitely does spin more. I don't know about that much though. And then with the sand wedge, uh, 7,542 for the X, 7,432 for the uh, black. And to be frank, again, I had mentioned earlier how it felt like it was trying to be the Pro V1. Those are Pro V1 numbers right there. That's usually exactly what I get. Uh, the Pro V1 usually spends a little less for me on my 50 yard pitches as well as my pitching wedge shots. And that's exactly what both of these balls kind of ended up showing. So um, there's a lot of similarities there as far as feel and how the ball reacted. So if you're someone who's been playing the Pro V1 for a long time, this is probably the ball you would want to switch to if you were wanting to switch to a cheaper model, uh, just because it looks like Snell's really brought a lot of that stuff that made the Pro V1 so great as far as its engineering into this ball. Um, those numbers, I mean, are pretty much spot on. I mean, it's a strong resemblance. All right, so getting into the durability, I'm actually looking at the black one here. Um, you know, it, it's it's really good durability. These are the two from earlier. And as you can see, they are pretty scuffed up after putting them through the gauntlet. I will say that these will definitely get you through 18 for sure. Um, it's not the best durability I've ever tested, but I would give it like a four and a half out of five, a four out of five, somewhere in that range. It's still really good, but I have tested some golf balls that just blew me away. The Encore was that way. I couldn't believe how durable the Encore was, especially the Vero X. Uh, it was just fantastic. This one is pretty close to that, but just not quite, but it still should get you through 18. If you can even make a ball last that long, if you can, lucky you. So all in all, in conclusion, Snell, I don't think, is trying to make a ball that is better than anything he's ever made before. Um, it's quite apparent that I don't think he's really, with, with the amount the golf ball cost, I don't think you can do that. But what Snell found was the perfect compromise. He's not trying to make a better ball than the Pro V1 or a better ball than any of the Tour ones out there. He's trying to make the same ball to the T. One that some guy who's been playing the Pro V1 his whole life can just switch over to and feel like there wasn't much of a difference. And that's what I see in this golf ball. I really do, guys. Um, everything from the feel, how it reacts, how it performs, there are so many Pro V references here and it just screams it, which is a good thing, really. What he's done is he hasn't created a better ball per se, but what he's done is he's created a Pro V1 clone at a much lower price. $33 a dozen, including the shipping, which if you buy in bulk, you can get it down to $28 a dozen, including the shipping, is a fantastic price point and will probably switch a lot of people. To be honest with you, if you're someone who is very serious about their golf, I would say is not a beginner. I would say is more intermediate, advanced, doesn't need forgiveness in a golf ball, and you want to switch from something that's pro level grade to something, this is going to be an easy switch. You're not going to have to relearn anything. You're not going to have to feel the, the, the nervousness of how's this ball going to react. If you've played a pro V1 or another toilet grade ball before, that's how this one's going to react. So Snell's really found the market. I'm really impressed. This will be the third time he's changed the market. Honestly, it's just really impressive. So guys, if you haven't played the Snell ball, go ahead and give it a try. And if you are a Snell user and you love the Snell balls, tell me in the comments why you love them so much. And uh, yeah, overall, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep watching to keep saving. Thanks, guys.